And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries, and welcome to Second Chances. My name is Greg Hennis. This is our weekly program where you say, well, what exactly is a second chance? Well, this is the best way I know how to tell you. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you totally understand our God has given us all that have uh, accepted him to be the Lord of our life, has given us all that second chance, third chance, fourth chance through his grace and mercy to serve him, because after all, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to die for our sins so that we could have life and have it everlasting. However, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we encourage you to do that before the end of this program. And as a matter of fact, before we we say goodbye, we're going to give you the opportunity to do so. So if the Lord has been tugging at your heart and uh, saying, you know, you need to do this and you need to do that, get things right and, uh, you know, live the life that you hear others talking about, we're going to give you that opportunity to do so. So that's actually why this program is on week after week. And we just have the privilege each and every week to meet neat and exciting people. And I think this one's going to be a treat from the uh, group known as Kingdom Racing. We have Alan Litvak. And Alan, thank you for joining us here on Second Chances. Greg, it's my pleasure to be with you. I'm excited to, to visit with you and share the gospel with your viewers or okay. your listeners. Okay, well, you know, can I, can I let our listeners in on a little secret before we get underway, if that's okay with you, Alan? It's your show. Go for it. Okay. So often we ask our guests to, if they can, to, especially when they're a distance away, to, to phone in on a landline, and it was not really possible. So I can't think of a better place to go and, and do a do a Christian radio program than in a uh, Christian restaurant known as Chick-fil-A. So you're actually at a Chick-fil-A plugged in and, and just kind of hanging out as we do this interview today, correct? I, I figured it was as safe a haven, uh, haven as I could find. So uh, if we're not good here, we could be in trouble. That's yeah. for sure. Well, I think, you, I think you'll find the love there at the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, first of all, Alan, uh, Kingdom Racing was founded by a gentleman uh, whose name is George... De Canto, or actually Del Canto, correct? Correct. And, and you were the first person to tell him that he was crazy, is that correct? I'm actually the first person who didn't tell George he was crazy. Uh, that was my original claim to fame uh, when he called me and approached me about getting involved with, with an IndyCar race ministry to go to IndyCar races like the Indy 500 to share the gospel. Hmm. So it's certainly a unique and, uh, and, and out-of-the-box way to share the gospel. But before we really get into kingdom racing, I'm, I'm dying to hear about it and, and all the innovative ways that you share the gospel. Tell us who you are, Alan. Tell us uh, where you're from and how you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, Greg, I'd love to do that. I'm a child of God, uh, just like you. I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. My family's from Cleveland, so uh, for people who don't believe in faith, uh, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. Nobody has more faith than Cleveland Browns fans during football season because we need all of God's help. <laughs> um, I grew up Reformed Jewish. Both of my parents were raised Orthodox Jewish in Cleveland, and my father was a very uh, well-respected uh, forensic psychiatrist in, in private practice, moved uh, to Columbus after he graduated Ohio State Medical School and had a, a very successful private practice. My mother is a, a gourmet chef who actually taught gourmet cooking classes out of their house for 23 years and just wrote her first and published her first cookbook at the age of 75. So they're both very low achievers in life. Uh, I grew up with two younger sisters. I'm the oldest of three kids and um, went and did my undergrad at Florida State University and was building my testimony, as we tend to say, before those of us who got saved come to acknowledge our sin and confess to our Lord, and uh, moved back to Ohio and went to broadcast school at Ohio University, where I met the love of my life, my wife now, Kelly Litvak, and uh, we began dating, graduated school, and I got my first job after college at CBS TV in New Orleans, and so we moved uh, straight out of the uh, frying pan into the fire, if you will, living in New Orleans, um, dating. And um, Kelly and I were soulmates, but we had no clue how to live together. I especially didn't. Um, the grace of God kept us together. And um, we got married in her Catholic church in Sydney, Ohio, near Dayton, after dating for several years. And my only stipulation to the priest at that time was my family's Jewish, 
And the only thing I don't want you to do in this ceremony is say the words Jesus Christ. And, and Greg, it blows me away to this day. He said, okay, for witness to me. Oh. So uh, it just, God bless him. Um, so we got married. And as you might expect, starting marriage without Jesus at the center of our lives, we had some struggles. And God blessed me to meet a man named David Vigil in Katy, Texas. We were shopping for a house. We had been saving up and we're going to build and buy our first house. And um, God introduced us to a salesman named David Vigil, who not only sold us a house, but witnessed to us. And he and his wife, Marianna, are not only our closest and dearest friends, but they're our kids' godparents. And David invited me to go to church, not once, not twice, but three or four times. And I finally said, David, you've been so respectful about my Jewish faith and persistent in inviting me to church. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to your church. I don't go to church. I'm going to sit in the back, and as soon as I get offended, I'm leaving. And I'm happy to tell you that was 16 years ago. And uh, that church, the Fellowship at Cinco Ranch, has been our church home uh, for the last 16 years. And uh, God started talking to me big time. And uh, my wife and I went to a family life marriage conference. And after going to church for about a month or two, um, that was another step in faith. And I didn't know it at the time. We were just kind of looking for a weekend to hang out and build in our marriage. And one year later, on April 22nd, 15 years ago, at the second Family Life Marriage Conference, I got down on my knees in my hotel room and gave my life to Jesus. Mm. That's the short version, Greg. Mm. So just for the sake of our listeners that don't understand, there's a, there's a comment that you made, and I want you to expound on it just a little bit, just to give our listeners a little insight that may not understand. As you mentioned, uh, you're, you're of the, the Jewish uh, denomination. You were born a Jew. And uh, one of the things that you requested in your marriage for the sake of your family members is not to mention the name Jesus Christ because it could be offensive to them. Can you give us the, the understanding of that, why it might be offensive to, so, to some of the Jewish faith, just so our listeners that don't understand could have a better understanding? Greg, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the first answer. is the same answer I gave for 33 years of my life, which is because um, Jewish people don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. They believe he's the son of God, and unfortunately, a lot of good Jewish people uh, are in for a rude awakening on Judgment Day, unless they are blessed like I was to, to come face to face with the truth. Um, for me, it was pride. It was just simply the pride of, well, that's the way I was raised, and so that's what I was told, and so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And that uh, was leading me down the wrong path. So when you decided to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, uh, has it allowed you to uh, witness to other Jews to let them know, hey, this is this Jesus Christ is the real Messiah? Has it opened up any doors to you for for those that have asked? Yeah, God has. God has. You know, He'll give us the desires of our heart if we ask Him and seek Him, and uh, that that is something that that has been a huge burden on my heart. Is, is my family? Um, nobody else in my immediate family is, is saved yet. Um, but uh, he, God has been very good about giving me a lot of opportunities through friends and friends of church and our church family and acquaintances and through Kingdom Racing uh, to, to be able to, uh, to be a witness to other Jewish people. And I just basically, uh, you know, let God speak through me. And uh, I, I go back to when David Vigil just, just basically, as an example of his life, uh, witnessed to me without hitting me over the head with a Bible or with the gospel and just, demonstrated a life that was based in faith, that was full of peace, that still had plenty of problems. Uh, you know, in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And, uh, you know, I, I had a very wise man, a uh, dear friend of mine, spiritual mentor uh, named Spencer Tillman. Uh, football fans might remember Spencer. He was the special teams captain for the San Francisco 49ers when Joe Montana and then won the Super Bowl. And Spencer told me uh, about a colleague who I had a, uh, wanted to witness to, and Spencer said, oh, it's not your job to save him. That's, that's between him and God. Your job is to just be a witness and, and maybe help him get one step closer to salvation. But people don't save. Jesus does. Mm. We are visiting with Alan Litvak as we are about to talk about uh, what he does. He is involved with Kingdom Racing. And uh, so let's start here with Kingdom Racing. Uh, Alan, tell us how you got involved with Kingdom Racing. Well, ironically... I had just finished, uh, I was a sports producer, and we had just finished uh, taping a sports show in Houston with Spencer Tillman. Spencer had been a guest on the show, and Spencer and I were having lunch, and I got a phone call from a gentleman named George Del Canto. 
And George said, you don't know me. Our mutual friend in men's ministry in Houston, Roger Warnett, told me that you love sports and racing and you love the gospel. And that's why I'm calling you. And I said, George, Roger's right. Roger's right. What can I do for you? And George, in a very bold fashion, which I to this day have incredible respect for my brother George, uh, shared that God had laid a vision on George's heart to start an indie race team to share the gospel with men all over North America through IndyCar racing. And George didn't know me from Adam Gregg, and he poured out his heart for about 10 minutes and told me how he was in a men's small group. We all know how Jesus changed the world in a men's small group with the disciples and that they were challenging each other to pray for a God-sized vision that they couldn't do on their own, that had to be from God. And George told me he prayed and prayed for weeks, and that after weeks uh, his godly wife uh, kept asking him, what's God telling you? And he said, nothing, and she said, keep praying. So thank God for all our godly wives that encourage us to pray as men of God, even when we're not hearing. And uh, after several weeks, um, she asked him, George, what's God telling you in your prayers uh, about this vision? And George tells the story that without knowing what he said, Greg, he literally spit out, God wants me to have an IndyCar team to witness to people around the world. And his wife said, George, you'd be perfect for that. You should do that. Now, I know my wife would have probably said, as much as she loves the Lord and me, you're crazy. How much is that going to cost? But his, his Proverbs 31 wife confirmed immediately, said, you should do that. So George tells me this story, sight unseen on the phone. And he's waiting for my reaction. And I said, George, uh, clearly this sounds like something from God. Uh, I think we should do that. Dead silence on the phone. I mean, you could hear a pin drop. And I said, George, are you there? Did I offend you? And George said, really? You really think we should do this? I said, George, you called me. And I said, did I say something wrong? Did I offend you? And he said, no, you're just the first person who hasn't told me I'm crazy for the last three months. <laughs> And I said, George, I'm not saying you're not crazy, but clearly this is something from God. And if you're going to go be crazy for Jesus at races, I'll do that with you. And that, thus was the, the, the beginning of Kingdom Racing. Mm. So Kingdom Racing, uh, how long has it been around, first of all? This all occurred uh, in 2008. Wow. So um, literally we had three or four other guys who were obedient to pray and you know felt called to, to come alongside with George. And we started praying and having conference calls. And then one of the other founding guys in, in Kingdom Racing, Randy Ford, said, hey, you know, George, if we're going to be a real race team, we probably need to go to a race. And we started praying about showing up at the Indy 500, which is insane for a bunch of guys who don't know anything about racing to consider doing. <laughs> and um, George went down to the first race of the year, which was two months before the Indy 500, and we started praying about, hey, let's talk to these big-name race drivers like Ray Hall and Foyt, and let's partner up with them, and let's go to the Indy 500. And George called us very excited uh, during the weekend and said, I found our driver. And we said, hey, man, this is awesome. Is it Foyt? Is it Ray Hall? Is it Andretti? He said, it's Davey Hamilton. And you could hear a pin drop again because we knew who Davey Hamilton was. Davey Hamilton's claim to fame was he had been in a horrific, life-threatening accident in 2001, should have died, should have lost his legs, and was told, you'll never walk again, you'll never drive again. And Davey Hamilton had just raced in the Indy 500 in 2007 in his first race since that accident in 2001. Wow. So once, once uh, he mentioned that name and, and everybody got past the shock, what happened next? Well, George had been pursuing all these big-name guys, and Davey had been pursuing George because Davey heard there was some crazy Christian guy who wanted to you know, be involved with a race team, and Davey wanted to race again. And so he was looking for sponsors, and so we partnered with Davey, and it takes a lot more than two months from a bunch of guys that don't know anything about racing to get prepared to race in the Indy 500, which is the greatest spectacle in racing and the largest single-day live spectator sport in the world. It's bigger than the Super Bowl. It's bigger than the World Cup. There are literally over 300,000 people at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on race day. And God put together a way for us to actually sponsor Davey and Davey to race in the Indy 500 two months later. Wow. And we showed up not having any clue how we'd be received, if people would mock us and say, what are you, you know, you stupid Christian guys have no business being at a racetrack. 
and we prayed the armor of God every day and said, well, Lord, you're calling us to go, so we're going to show up and trust you. And George's, uh, one of George's great statements of faith over the years has been God's calling us to prepare the fields, and he'll bring the rain if and when he's ready. Mm. And he brought the rain that month, Greg, because we were well-received. We had people from literally all over the world, Christians, coming up and saying, we are so excited that you guys are here. Thank you for doing this. We need an IndyCar team here representing the Lord. And then Davey went out and finished 14th in the race, which was just an incredible experience. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. So that was the birth of Kingdom Racing. Um, we kind of got done and said, wow, look at what God just did. And we were fortunate. to. Our, our mission is to share God's word through motorsports and, and help a million men come to Christ. Mm. Uh, we, we feel like, you know, men are obviously the spiritual leaders of our families. And if, if we can help lead a million men to, to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we can impact them and their families and their worlds. And so that's our mission. And... Um, we kind of said, now what, after that? And uh, the next year, we showed back up at Indy and not only raced in Indianapolis, but raced at the race in Dallas, which was the track where Davey almost died in 2001. So God expanded our kingdom and our territory through him to two races. And long story short, uh, George immediately started trying to convince Davey he was way too valuable to what Kingdom Racing was doing for the Lord and that Davey needed to retire. Well, telling a race car driver to quit driving is not an easy thing to do. And so uh, it took George three years to convince Davey it was time to retire. And and Davey is just beloved by race fans and people who knew his story and knew what he overcame to race again. And Davey could still drive. But um, last year, the 2012 IndyCar Series season was our first year with Davey not driving for Kingdom Racing. And it was our first year to be a full-time entrant and for Kingdom Racing to be represented in every single IndyCar race at all the races across North America. And so God blessed us with a great partnership. Davey formed his own race team and partnered with another Christian named Sam Schmidt, who, if you've ever watched the Indy 500 or if you're a casual race fan, uh, and certainly the serious hardcore IndyCar fans know Sam is the, the owner who's in a wheelchair. Sam was also involved in a racing accident like Davey. And unlike Davey, Sam lost his legs and is paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair. It takes Sam three hours every day, Greg, to get out of bed mm. and start his day. And he is an incredible man of God. And uh, he has raised millions of dollars for paralyzed people through his foundation. He owns several successful businesses, and he and Davey uh, co-own Schmidt Hamilton uh, Racing. And Simon Pagano, the 2012 Rookie of the Year, is their number one driver. So Kingdom Racing had the Rookie of the Year in the IndyCar Series last year, which for a bunch of guys who don't know anything about racing is a really cool way to tell people about God. We are visiting with Alan Lidvak. He is the uh, owner, or actually uh, an employee. I, I guess you're, are you considered an employee, I Alan? head up our foundation. Yeah, I head, I'm our national campaign uh, contributions manager now for our, our uh, Kingdom Racing Foundation. Okay. If you want to go by titles. We're all servants. That, that's what we do at Kingdom Racing. We're all servants. Okay. Now, obviously, Kingdom Racing is very unique in, in the field of, of, of sports and ministries. What would you say that is most unique about Kingdom Racing? Well, we are the only faith-based team in IndyCar, and to our knowledge in the history of IndyCar, uh, and racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in almost 100 years of racing there. So praise the Lord for that. Again, that's him, not us. But we, the only reason we are there is to share God's word through motorsports and, and again, let God hopefully uh, bring a million men to Christ. Uh, you know, the other sponsors are cigarette companies and drink companies and alcohol companies, and uh, we are their uh, hawking God, if you will. Mm. Uh, and God is our product. Mm. So um, what makes us unique is that we put on what we call uh, race fan festivals. Uh, we are just starting to be able to put that program together, and this is where people listening who are excited about this can partner with us and help us. Um, we were able and blessed to help bring the first Christian concert at the Indy 500 um, opening weekend of the track this year, Building 429 and three other Christian groups headlined a concert at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the same stage where 
you know, all these secular bands uh, like Poison have played over the years, and we had uh, thousands of people attend that fan festival, which was uh, another first for Kingdom Racing, and, and Lord willing, we're going to do a lot more of that in the future. Mm. We're visiting with Alan Lidvak of Kingdom Racing, and uh, a few minutes ago, Alan, you mentioned that uh, part of the uh, part of the purpose was to uh, reach 1,000, or actually, I'm sorry, 1 million men. Uh, wh- what, what was it about the 1 million men that made you choose that number? Well, again, um, we spend a lot of time in prayer uh, seeking God's will and listening, and um, we have God has blessed us with some mighty men uh, as kingdom advisors and on our board, and one of those men is Pat Morley. Uh, many of your audience, I'm sure, will recognize Pat's name, the author of Man in the Mirror and uh, his, his newest book. And um, Pat said, hey, George, you need to have a goal. Um, you need to, this is a great platform, but uh, we were just looking to help bring men to Christ. And Pat said, let's put a number on it. Uh, that'll help capture people's attention and imagination on this deal. And so through prayer and, and with Pat kind of leading that uh, charge, uh, that's where, you know, we feel like if, uh, if a million men come to Christ that um, we're going to be able to make a pretty significant impact in our society. Mm. We're visiting with uh, Alan Lidvak of Kingdom Racing. Uh, Alan, is there, is there a website that uh, one could visit to learn more about the foundation of Kingdom Racing? Absolutely. It's uh, www.kingdomracing.net, kingdomracing.net, and our Facebook page is Kingdom Racing. And um, we, uh, we are blessed. We've got thousands of uh, followers, uh, active followers on Facebook, uh, we have some really cool stuff going on, Greg. Um, the next IndyCar race is in Houston, Texas, the first weekend in October. And this will be the first time we we're based in Houston. This will be the first time we've had a home race since we got started. They have not raced in Houston uh, since prior to 2008. So we are obviously very excited about having a race in our hometown. And we'll be putting on a luncheon. This is all on the website, uh, Wednesday, October 2nd. Um, seating is very limited and tickets are going fast, but that's the information's on the website. If you would like to come meet George and Davey and hear their testimonies, um, we'll be putting that event on with uh, Roger Warnett and a gathering of men uh, in Houston. And um, we've obviously got events uh, race weekend uh, out at the uh, Reliant Park, uh, right there by Reliant Stadium where the Houston Texans play. That's where the racetrack's going to be for the weekend. So we'll be out there for that as well. Mm. There's a, there's a connection uh, I see here uh, with the way of the master. Uh, tell us about uh, the relationship, how it began with its author, uh, the authors of uh, Way of the Master, and uh, also tell us, Alan, if you could, about how Kingdom Racing utilizes this resource. Absolutely, we. Uh, that's another one of the unique ways that we uh, share God's word. Um, our uh, pastor, our missions pastor at my church, David Rizika approached me uh, after our, our first season and said, man, I really think what you guys are doing is cool. How can I help besides praying for you guys? And he and I got together and started visiting. And uh, Pastor David um, discipled uh, a bunch of guys at our church in the way of the master, uh, Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron's great program and ways to, to witness to a stranger. And they came to the Indy 500 that year and treated it like a missions trip. They raised their own support, paid their own way, and showed up and did way the master out in the uh, the campgrounds area um, where there's a lot of unruly behavior and a little bit of a Mardi Gras kind of feel, and uh, were able to successfully witness to hundreds of people wow. for the Memorial Day weekend. And when we saw what they were doing under the umbrella of Kingdom Racing, George said, "My God, that, that, those guys are Kingdom Racing. That's what this is all about." And so we turned it into a formal program, and for since then we have been uh, discipling guys in the way of the master, and we call them our Kingdom Racing Ambassadors, and they show up at IndyCar races, not just the Indy 500, and share the gospel. Um, our, our partners at Living Waters, Alan Pearson and uh, Ray and those guys have been awesome. In fact, they just sent a group of folks from Living Waters in California to the race in Sonoma last month, and we had another ambassador team uh, out there sharing the gospel, and we will have the ambassadors out all weekend at the Grand Prix of Houston. Mm. 
Yeah, we recently uh, had the pleasure of having Ray Comfort on this program, and it was uh, truly, uh, truly a blessing. Uh, you mentioned uh, Ray Comfort, Kirk Cameron. Uh, can you name some other more notable ministry partners and, and what roles they might play in Kingdom Racing? Well, we, uh, I'm glad you said that because we are literally uh, about to announce a new national grassroots campaign to partner with churches and ministries all over the country. Uh, we're going to announce that uh, race weekend in Houston. But, um, I, again, Pat Morley has been an incredible blessing um, as an advisor and a brother and um, with Man in the Mirror. And so we are always looking for ways to do things together to share the gospel and partner with Pat and Man in the Mirror. And um, George is a member of Second Baptist Church in uh, Houston, Dr. Ed Young's church. And, and Pastor Wallace Henley has been an invaluable advisor uh, personally and spiritually and, um, you know, helping us strategically. Um, we partner with Second Baptist. They have a Hot Wheels and Barbecue car show where they literally have hundreds of, of cool, antique, and, uh, you know, high-speed high, uh, cars out in their parking lot every year for a men's outreach, and we bring, you know, a Kingdom Racing show car, and uh, we've had our drivers there in the past, so we partner with Second Baptist. Uh, Pastor Rizika has actually been blessed uh, to start his own church, Fort Men Baptist, and, and we are partnered with them. And Marine Creek Church up in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area with our team director's church, that's Charles West, and um, so we are constantly looking for churches that want to partner. We've obviously got some cool things we can do to help their men's ministry by bringing a Kingdom Racing show car and or a driver um, to church events and ministry events. And um, we get blessed because we get volunteers and prayer partners and folks who uh, would like to help support the fastest church on wheels, which is our Kingdom Racing race car, which goes 230 miles an hour. Mm. Well, Al, we, we certainly uh, appreciate you taking the time. One more time, that website uh, uh, for Kingdom Racing. www.kingdomracing.net, kingdomracing.net, and you will see a VIP ticket offer if you're anywhere near the Houston area for the Houston Grand Prix and Kingdom Racing on Facebook. Uh, follow us, uh, pick up our tweets, follow the races, and pray for um, Simon Pagino in the number 77 car and Tristan Bautier, our second driver in the 55 car. Simon is a two-time winner this year, including the last race in Baltimore two weeks ago, and Simon's in third place in the championship, so we will take your prayers. Okay. And finally, uh, Alan, the most important thing that we do on this program is we like to do our share of giving people the opportunity to be uh, led to Jesus Christ like you were many, many years ago, and we would uh, like to know if you'd be willing to lead our listeners that are ready, willing, and able to accept Jesus into their life the opportunity to do so. Greg, I'd be honored to do that. Um, if you're out there and maybe you're a race fan, uh, maybe you uh, think you just kind of casually came across this uh, radio program, or if you're a, a faithful follower, uh, maybe you're related or, or know a faithful follower who invited you to be on here, I want to assure you there's no accidents or coincidences in God's kingdom, and you're here for a reason. And um, if you would like to repeat uh, these simple words in this prayer after me, um, this is a prayer that will change your eternal destination. And um, if, if you would like to bow your heads and pray with me now, uh, Heavenly Father, you're an awesome God. And we thank you for this program. We thank you for men like Greg and his staff that uh, are giving their time daily to tell people who you are and spread the gospel. And right now, Lord, you know the people, the men and women who are out there who are seeking you, who are listening to this program. And, Lord, um, if they repeat these words, Lord, we know you'll hear them and you'll answer this prayer and start a, a party in heaven. Um, so, folks, if you want to repeat after me, dear God, um, as best as I know how to do it right now, I want to give my life to you. I confess that I've tried to do things on my own and, and live my life, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and I've done things I shouldn't have done and things I didn't mean to do, and I ask you to take away those sins and forgive me for that, Father. And I put my trust in you right now that you can and will and are doing that right now, Lord. And as best as I knew, I want to follow you. I want you to be my best friend. I want you to come into my heart and live forever. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would forgive me of my sins, that I could spend eternity with you in heaven, and as best as I know how, 
I want to live for you. I want to do things that make you proud, that honor you. I know I'm not going to be perfect, but I also know that by the blood of Jesus Christ that you forgive me for what I have done and what I will do. And as best as I know, I commit my life to you, and I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. And Jesus, we pray this in your name, because without your blood and without your name, this prayer has no power. But through your blood and by your name, this prayer has all the power. Amen. Our guest has been Alan Litvak of Kingdom Racing. And, Alan, we'd like to thank you for joining us here on Second Chances. Thank you very much, Greg. God bless. God bless. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here from Advantage Radio Ministries.